Okay, and we're on the second floor here. Make it up to the stairs. It opens up into another tri-archway hallway, which opens up into another large atrium. All right. Uh, as you get to the edge of the atrium, uh, you instinctively see more blurs, one going off to the left hallway and one to the right hallway. And you can see on the far end of the open atrium, um, it's similar to the one below. Every All the furnishings have been moved to the side, except in this room, they've all been moved towards the far wall, almost completely blocking off that wall. You cannot even tell if there's a door on that side. Okay. Best guess is that's where our cut where our guess is. And you also see, in a very particular sim... Excuse me. Circular fashion, there are very lavish armor sets around this room. Other than that, there are no other props in here except for all the furniture that's been piled up against the southernmost wall. Would it be possible to blast uh, to blast through the furniture? Uh, you believe that probably could be done if you could do that in some way. Uh, that would be destruction of properties to some extent, you know. Well, I'm just going to throw an explosive at there and see if, it do if we can clear out some of it. Uh, you <clears throat> throw an explosive. Uh, your explosives are pretty good, but it only breaks apart a flimsy chair it landed on. Your explosives aren't going to be good enough to break through these, you don't think. Because these are like dressers and stands. These are some very heavy furnishings here. And you are now down to two explosives. Would a, would a dwarf's hammer work? <laughs> you believe you'd be here all day, probably breaking open all these all this furniture. From the map, it shows you can get to these rooms behind the atrium. Uh, if you go all right, well, let's take a look. Let's head east. All right, you did see one of the blurs run this way as well. You get to the edge of the star room. There are four more chests in each corner. There's a hallway to the left, a hallway to the right, and a, a large opening which presumably leads you to the library. Well, if there are more chests in there, let's at least spend a little bit of time and start looting. Okay, what do you do? Despite my previous, my previous experience, I smashed the lock off one of them. Which one? Uh, first one. Which is... Two! Two o'clock. All right, uh, you, um... Uh, roll for damage. Four. Another large chunk out of this lock. This lock goes flying off. There is another huge satchel of gold in here. A lot of treasure. Not sure if you're just stealing from the noble now, but there's a large satchel of treasure. I hadn't thought about it, but we are stealing from the nobles. I just give her a blank look and ask, do you know what my profession is? Mm -hmm. Yes, but I live here. In this town. Well, then I'll take the rest of these three, and you can just hand me what you find, and I'll be the one stealing. How's that? Yeah, I'll pick the lock up yourself. I take my little bag of gold that I just found and add it to the other one and just let him go about his business. Okay, Skaith, what would you like to do? I check lock uh, lock on four. Okay, uh, what? Do you, how do you want to open it? They all seem uh, to be the old chests just as normal. They're all just they're all just as old. Yeah, they all seem to be just as old chests. I j I jam the knife in one of them in the lock hole keyhole. Right. You break this lock open. Another large satchel of gold. These are very equally distributed satchels of gold. You ever think maybe these are traps? You expect me to think. I move on to, uh... Ten o'clock and eight o'clock. Eight. Eight. If one of these things comes alive, I'm running. What are you and doing? I jab, the, jam a knife through it again. 
Alright, you break this lock off, you open it up, to which there does not appear to be anything in this one, but you can discern that this one is a false bottom. Excellent. I remove it. Alright, to which you see a... small... a, a folded up pink sheet. I carefully unfold it. Place your hands on the sheet, it is very cold. So it's been there for a while. Alright, give me one second here, guys. Okay, so you were reaching in the bottom of this treasure chest and there was a uh, pink cloth under a hidden false bottom to which you touched the cloth and it was very cold to the touch. You kind of recoiled from the surprise of the fact that this is a really cold cloth. <coughs> Can I take one of my regular knives and just try and lift it up with it? Uh, yes, uh, you do so. You happen to kind of try to lift it from the edges. It seems very heavy, or at least you're not going to be able to get enough leverage because you just, you're just just testing this with your knife. And uh, You also realize it's a little bit damp, like maybe it was freshly placed, or just an hmm. odd quality about it. Uh, both of you roll me a d20. Too late. Nineteen. Five. So, Ivory, you just watch on in horror as, uh, Daniel's poking about here. You have no idea what's gonna happen. Uh, Daniel, you have an eerie inkling what this pink cloth might be as, uh, you feel a very sharp pain in your shoulder region. And uh, as you adjust your vision, you realize you're staring at the top of the treasure chest. Not inside it anymore. Uh, Ivory, uh, you watch in horror as this chest grew teeth and chomped down on Skaith's arm. Okay, uh, roll, roll d20 for me this time. Twelve. Twelve. Okay, uh, how do you want to hit this and where do you want to hit it? <coughs> um. Or with what and how? I want to avoid smashing his hand, so I want to kind of just try and smack it in the front, try to knock it away from him. Okay. Mm, you roll a good enough hit. You <clears throat> nudge it a good few paces, but Skaith's arm is still wedged in here. As uh, Skaith, uh, go ahead and take a good 10 damage for me as you uh, now realize what has just happened, and this thing has a good grip on your arm. I hate mimics. I take my obsidian knife and I try and wedge it in the lid. Uh, alright, uh, roll a... Roll intelligence for me. Where'd we go? Nat one. So, as you're grabbing for this dagger, you have this horrifying notion. You know disintegrating daggers work well at anything it touches disintegrates, but... How well does it work if whatever it's touching is also touching you, or if your blood spilling into it as well? As you roll a d20 to follow through with that uh, stab, at, or to pry this lid open, as you uh, only had a millisecond to think of that. Fourteen. Uh, you jam this knife in between the lid to try to gain some leverage. Uh, as soon as you touch the knife to the rim, this chest starts disintegrating and you have this horrifying moment of oh god it's gonna get me but before ivory can come in with a second swing this thing just kind of dissolves around you and your arm is free but you now have a good few holes in your arm i got lucky there's one more chest in the room 
Maybe we just leave that one alone. Yeah, I agree. Right. We just leave it. There's a halt to your left, a halt to your right, and a door in front of you leading towards the library. Do you try to bandage yourself in any way, or you just drip dry? Yes, I just... I try and wrap a little bit of... tear off some of my, uh... cloak and just wrap it around my arm. A quick, a quick bandage, just enough to... Something quick. Yeah. Okay. Where do you go? Towards the library. Alright, there's a large, grandiose set of doors leading to the library. As soon as you open them, there is a large <coughs> collection of aisles and aisles of books uh, adorned with windows at the back. There are several reading tables about, and to the far right, you can see a giant piano in an open area near more of the tables. Okay. Take a few steps in, the doors hastily shut behind you. A loud collaboration. Um, I quickly look around trying to figure out how, um, where the little dude is that shut the door. All right, uh, once over, you do not see anything. Uh, roll, Ivory, roll perception because you're looking. You're intentively doing this. Fifteen. All right. Don't see anything, but you happen to hear breathing very close by. Like, whatever it was, if it's one of those invisible kobolds, they have paused so you cannot see them. How close is he? You believe they're right next to the door. You're about a good five feet away from the door. I'm going to be incredibly cruel. I want to take my dagger and try and aim about about my own height and try and hit it. You want to kind of throw a dagger relatively where you think he's at? Yeah. Which side of the door? Left side or right side? You can Which hear breathing. <clears throat> what now? What side are the hinges on? Uh, both doors seem to close behind you. You cannot really pinpoint. You hear breathing like in the center of the door. So you're not sure if it's one or two of them. Okay. Uh, roll a d20. 13. Alright, uh, this dagger pins right into the door, as two blurs can instantly be seen vacating either side of the door just as you planned, right towards either sides of the library. Uh, Skate, you have taken notice, as since she has thrown a dagger, these blurs running as well. Are any of them ro running towards my general area? You're like right next to Ivory. One of them's running up north, one's running south, like the length of the room. Okay. So, I think we should just try and head south. Just try and follow one south. So, you can faintly see this one of them <clears throat> run, kind of hiding behind the giant piano sitting in the room. Uh, you can obviously have seen where he went to, but he kind of just pauses behind the piano and you kind of lose him. But, you know, since you can't see him, either you've lost him completely or it's holding still. side of the piano. I want Ivory to head to the other side if she will. I help him. Try to corner him. All right. Uh, as you take about three steps around the sides of the piano, you're almost around, like, perfect sides. The piano starts playing. You can see the keys from your vantage point. They are moving on their own. Very lovely music, a very well-fashioned melody. 
not just banging on the keys. Wow, the rich here have everything. They have a self-playing piano. I doubt that. It's probably one of those little things. We can't see them now, can we? His fingers would be moving. Not necessarily if they're moving slow enough. A slow melody. Do you want to see if you can see like his fingers? Is that what I think you're getting at? Yeah. Uh, both of you roll. Or who wants to investigate? I'll investigate. Okay, roll it. Five. You really can't tell, but you think so, but you really try to lean in as well as you can. But you do not see any blur of fingers. You are like right behind where the kobold would be sitting to play this piano. There's... You wave your hand around, nothing. He's not there. So then the rich really do have everything. Okay, do I see anything or hear anything behind the piano? No, Dan, uh, Skaith is now stand, like, standing right behind the bench, staring at the keys. You are on the uh, east side, or on the side of the piano. No, uh, nothing. <laughs> I can't hear anything. Okay, so that little guy's escaped. More than likely. So let's just keep let's just keep heading through. Is you both instinctively are cut short as a book is thrown across the far way of the library, hurled across the way. Not at you, just out of place, like someone just chucked a book. What book is it? It's across the library. You can't tell. <laughs> Ignore it. Let's just keep going. Another book is thrown. Uh, I investigate. Ivory starts making her way over there. Three more books are thrown with a little more ferocity. They are pegging the wall to the uh, west side. They are just like... Like being thrown off the bookshelf just poof, right into the wall. Fall lip to the ground. Uh, it looks like it's almost from the last two or three aisles. Uh, you've made it about to the midway point, back towards like you're even with the door now. Uh, the closer you get, the more books seem to be thrown. They're just getting scattered. And a few of them start heading your way. Not as if they were aiming for you, but just being thrown randomly. I pick up one of the books closer to me and just try and read what it is. Oh, the places you'll go by Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I put it in my bag. <laughs> it's a free book. More books are just being thrown by random. Shelves are being emptied now. Books are just being thrown and piled at that end of the library. A few of the shelves start shaking. Uh, roll a d20. Fifteen. You hurl this hardback book as hard as you can. It lands amongst the, you know, scattered piles of other books. Everything stops. No more books are being thrown. Shelves stop rattling. I'm gonna throw in? another one. You throw another book, it lands just about the same place. The shelf on the end wiggles ever so little bit, kind of rock teeters back and forth. I just start walking back towards the piano. The shelf on the end teeters enough towards the next shelf closest, and Dink leans up against it, now freshly emptied of books. To, continue to investigate that direction. To which that shelf also begins to tip over. Boom. Boom. Gets the next one. It starts to lean. Boom. 
as the domino effect begins of these gigantic bookshelves. I run to the edge, past the piano, trying to get to the other end. You want to run, like, behind the piano, like, out of the range of the bookshelves? I want to book it. Book it where? Beyond the range of the bookshelves, yeah. I just want to book it. So you want to kind of cower towards, like, the southeast corner of the library? Yes. Okay. These bookshelves start rocketing down. Three, four, five. Ivory, they are, like, right coming up next to you. Yeah, I am going to run in the same direction as him and try and hide as well. Uh, roll to outrun the books. Down those books. Bam, 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 bam. You are barely making it as a few books are randomly thrown some whiz right past you. Bam, 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 bam. You make it just towards Scaith as all these bookshelves have finally stopped their domino effect and finally hit the wall at the far end. Everything seems to settle. The piano starts up once more. I ignore the piano and just keep moving it. Are there any doors or anything? There's a uh, door to the south, which leads to, as the map read, an office. Uh, there is a small little alcove leading to a smaller office, which leads to, you think, a bathroom, from what the map shows, and into the crafting room. Uh, a room up north leads to the storage, and a, another office leads to another bathroom, and the art gallery, and of course the main entrance back out to the hallway. I don't know, I like the sound of the crafting room. The piano plays a, a recognizable tune, which you cannot, unfortunately, uh, name, but you've heard it in your youth. A little tune that stops short of one note. It sounds incomplete. As if tempting someone to play that final note. It repeats itself. I, would I be able to remember that note? Oh yes, you are very familiar with whatever that little song is. You used to sing it all the time. Well, then I, I, I press the note. Go to the key. You do have a... To check yourself to which key this is. You press a few wrong notes real quick and happen to find it and... Tink, and that is the right note, but you were not in timing with the song. Unless the song repeats itself and it waits for your input. I play, I play it again. Tink, right on time. All the keys press down at once in this horrible, loud concoction of just chords and melodies. Just all at once, like someone just smashed all the keys down at once. Echoes out throughout the entire library. The bench tips over, and the lid stand snaps in half as the lid collapses on the piano. You hear wood splintering. As we Mario 64 it up in here, and this becomes a demon piano. I, uh... This thing splinters into a semi-formed mouth and begins to start romping about, playing that horrible concussion of just ill dread written notes as this thing starts romping around in a gnashing mess. And you call me stupid. I stab it with a knife. This thing flails at you and knocks you to the side before you can even lay a hand on it. This thing is coming at you, about to literally devour you in its piano mouth. I try and smash it from the top with my mole. You want to break the lid. Uh, roll d20 to get on top of it. 18. You happen to jump on top of it. Uh, roll to smash. Or roll to hang on at this point. 20. 20. All right, you instantly bring down this mall and smash this lid in. It's essentially top upper jaw is broken out of contortion, but this thing is still flailing as splinters of wood. Um, Scathe, would you like to do anything to try and get out of this situation? Is this thing still trying to trample you at this point? Yeah, I want to try and roll it out of the way. Okay, uh, roll it. 
Alright, I rolled a 14. This thing gives you a good couple stomps. Five damage. Managed to roll out of the way as this thing kind of collides with the wall. I am going to go ahead and try and smash it again. Roll it. Seven. Seven. This thing actually bucks you off and spins around to face you two again. Kind of semi charge at you again in its loud romping of horrific music. We just try to bolt out the door. Which door? Uh, the west one, the one into the small office and craft room. All right, you make it through that little door, and you are in the small little office. You'll see is a rectangle with a smaller rectangle, and it's still within the confines of the library. Um, it's just a small office. Looks like a room for uh, printing papers, and there's a, another small door leading towards the crafting room. This piano is making its way towards the door, but you are pretty sure it won't be able to fit through the door. What do you suggest we do, Ivory? I suggest we keep running. Piano has stopped. You can peer out the opening in the door, and the piano is still its mouthy, splintery mess, but it has stopped moving. seem to be animate anymore. Remind me to never get anywhere near any musical objects ever again. How about you just stay away from all objects? That's the second time you've brought in something to light. I only have one. And if something's tempting you, quit touching it. But the keys were so shiny. To which you see a, another small little blur run past this piano. Back towards, like, the main hallway doors. I follow it! Burst back out into the library and give chase to this blur. Scathe? I just leave her. I want to get through this craft room. I want to see what's in here. Alright, uh, Ivory, you see this blur head back out into that, uh, treasure chest room and back out to the, uh, Sorry, actually, uh, yeah, back out into the uh, open atrium. Is the piano gonna chase me? Piano has not moved. You've made it well past out of the library. It didn't seem to take any effect. Okay, I'm still chasing the blur. Alright, uh, once you make it to the open atrium, this thing keeps going into the uh, next star room, and uh, it takes a, uh, keeps going straight right into the door at the end and closes it behind it. Escape. So where am I, exactly? You are in this small little office in the library on the map. It's the little rectangle with a smaller rectangle. Okay. I want to try and open the door, door to the craft room. The door is open. You enter the crafting room. Room is fairly small. It looks more like a workshop. Benches and tools galore. Anything I might be able to lift, uh, pilfer? I believe anything in here could be of use in some way or another. It is a very stocked crafting room. Uh, does not look like <clears throat> anything is being freshly worked on. There's a single light bulb illuminating the room, but uh, nothing. Out of the ordinary, but it is a very well stocked room. Anything in here you believe could add to your finely trimmed arsenal or tool set? There's a door leading back out to the hallway towards the star room, and there's a door leading back out, uh, continuing on towards uh, the map showed the study. Try the room to the study. It is locked. Is there is there a lock on it? 
There does appear to be a lock on it. There does or does not? There does. There is a keyhole. I'm going to try and pick it. Alright, roll it. How about 18? 18. You managed to successfully pick this lock. You believe the door is open now. I just head on in. You give a good tug on the door, the door does not budge. The door is static in place. You recheck the lock, the door is unlocked, but the door will not move. How sturdy does this door seem? This door is a good oak door, a uh, couple inches thick. You don't necessarily believe you'd be able to bust it down. Would any of my explosives help it? Probably not, you think. I couldn't even blow off the hinges? You think you'd really only get, as you only have two explosives left, a, one like good shot at blowing that off, and if you miss one, you've still screwed yourself? <sighs> Ivory, I this, this uh, invisible cobalt has... Uh, Continued onwards and has closed the door to the private study, as the map shows. What do you do? We're in the atrium at the moment. Okay, so he went to the study room? Yes. Uh, I tried to open the door. Is it locked? You continue towards the door. There are four more treasure chests in that star room as well. Uh, the door is not locked. I am not interested in the stupid treasure chest last You open the study, there is a, uh, it is a private study, a, uh, room with a nice little lavish fireplace that does happen to be lit. There are some, uh, bookshelves and a desk and, like, a writing desk and a reading desk as well as a few chairs in there. Do I see or hear anything? Uh, roll perception. You hear nothing more than the crackle of the fire. I'm going to start heading back to the open atrium. Which way do you go? Through the hallway or back to the library? Through the hallway. You cut through the diamond room and you're back in the star room. And you uh, are back at the edge of the open atrium to the east. Okay. Is that it? I just, yeah, I just I just start cutting cutting across to the private study area. Okay, you, know, you cut across the atrium. You are back at the doors of the private study. There are four more ch uh, treasure chests in that star room there. You see. I'm gonna open the eight o'clock one. The eight o'clock. Uh, another old chest. Uh, another old lock. Well, I'm gonna stab it again. Right. This one shat this one shatters with ease. Uh, there's another huge satchel of gold in there as well. And I'm just gonna pick that up and leave it. Pick it up and move on. Okay. To where? The private study. You open the door. The ivory is standing there. That's where you went. Well, that's what happens when you leave me. You, uh, scathe roll perception. See if you hear anything. Seventeen. All right, you happen to hear a s footsteps in the bedroom next door. Okay. I would like to go and investigate that. Open the door to the master bedroom. It's a very lavish bedroom. Uh, private chest, private vanities, and one of those old-fashioned large beds with the curtain draperies over top of it, all drawn out very nicely. Room is still. You can both hear breathing in this room. You can tell that if one of these little invisible guys is here, that's got to be him.
Is there anything interesting in the room bes or besides just the breathing? Nothing to take note of. Nothing to take too much notice of other than a very, you know, nice bedroom of a noble's house. Against my better judgment, I've decided, you know what, I've robbed it enough, I'm not gonna, I don't want to search. I didn't even take a look at the private study, I just kind of listened in the private study. I want to um, search around for this little, th where the breath is coming from. Alright, then both of you roll perception. Seven. Nineteen. Alright, Skaith, you're kind of arguing with yourself to steal or not. Um, Ivory, you happen to hear it is around the... Uh, Southeast corner, like hiding around the around the bed, like right near the door, like to the left of you guys. 